Hi, it's Joel. It's uh, Woeful Wednesdays. It's the worst day of the week and uh, there's nothing better for a bad day than a good run. And the second best thing is a good run that you're watching on YouTube. So uh, uh, today I'm in San Francisco. It's sunny. It's a uh, beautiful morning and uh, it's time to go. Let's go. Today I'm running with Carl Olsen. Morning Carl. Morning. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Carl is another street runner like me. And how long have you been doing it Carl? Uh, almost 17 years. <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> I guess we're all counting aren't we? Right. And this run we're doing this morning is a run that you call Carl's run, right? Right. So how many times do you anticipate that you've done this run? Uh, I used to only do it like every Sunday, uh -huh. but now I do it maybe two or three times a week. I have a friend named Kim who lives near here, so I pick her up and we run this about once a week. Sometimes we do Kim's run, okay? And then I used to have, well, I still do have a friend named Jim and Craig. Right, they've got their own runs as well. Yeah, but <coughs> Craig and I often run Carl's run on Sunday. I see. Well, thank you for uh, coming out with me again. It's a real pleasure to run with other people who are on a running streak like me, but you're almost twice as far in as I am. <laughs> oh, you, you've got like eight or nine years in a row? Yeah, next Wednesday is my three th day 3,000. Wow. So you're on, what, 8,000 or something? 6,200. 6,200. About. Yeah. What that's is your minimum run? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, uh, three miles. So I've run one mile, the statutory minimum, a couple of times when I've been sick. But I don't know about you. I don't tend to get sick, really, because of the daily running, I think. Yeah, I've been pretty lucky too. <clears throat> so, um, and what's your daily minimum? It's almost always three. There have been a couple twos in there. And then twice I, I ran on a treadmill inside when it was snowy outside. So, in the whole of your street, you've only run on a treadmill twice. Right. Wow, that's incredible. I've probably done 30 times on a treadmill. I hate treadmill running. I'm sure you feel the same. Yeah. I, I enjoy going outside and living in San Francisco with mild climate. You know, you can pretty much always run outside. It's. Uh, it's, I've known it to be pretty foggy and pretty wet in San Francisco in yes. the past. I come here every year around this time for a week and uh, yes, oftentimes it's not as nice as it is today. So tell me, uh, what were you always a runner, Carl? And, and I started when I was about 30 years old. Uh -huh. What was it that precipitated you? to run? Well, when I was in high school, my physical edu education teacher did a mile, had everybody do a mile run, and I won. And I said, hey, that'd be fun. But then I found out you had to practice every day. And in high school, I didn't like that. Of course, there's a great irony there since now I've run every day <laughs> yeah. for the last 17 years. <laughs> so when you started back when you were in your early 30s, you're a professional, you're a lawyer, right? So you were right. busy uh, working a lot, I would imagine. So what did you think... Until we turn here. Did you think... Um, 
I'm going to keep running every day. Now, uh, when I was in my 30s, I probably ran about four or five times a week. You know, it was more about speed then. Right. Were you competing? Racing? I did 10Ks. <laughs> Back in the day, I could maybe do about a six-minute mile, really, in a 10K. Well, all right, that's fast. Can't do that anymore. <laughs> and at what point did you realize you'd been running every day and were on a streak? Well, I had had like a 60-day running streak. Right. Before. And, uh, and you know, I would end it if something happened. And then I got up to 60 again. And I said, you know, I'm going to try to keep this going. Because <laughs> it's hard to go 60 days in a row. It is. It's certainly not straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> I know to my cost. So then I got up to 100. Then I got up to a year. And my wife and my friend Jim, we had a big kind of celebration that I had gone running every day for a year. I think my wife was thinking, all right, now he'll, now he'll stop it. But, you know, I figured, I've done this for a year, it would be really hard Yeah, I feel <laughs> to exactly start the, the same. streak again. I feel exactly the same. And if you can run a year, you can run two years, right? Yeah. This is a lovely run, these ponds. I should say we're in Golden Gate park here in the middle of the city of San Francisco. Yeah, this is called Stowe Lake. Star Lake. Stowe. Oh, Stowe Lake. Okay. Very lovely. So, I usually try to have some scenery or some water on every run. During the week, I'll go running along the Embarcadero, which is near San Francisco Bay. Yep, that's where I'm running next week. So, uh, you know, I'll usually run either to Pier 39, which is kind of a tourist mecca. Yep. That's the parking sea lions. I know it very well, yes. Or, 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 or. <laughs> or else I'll go running to the ballpark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have offices downtown there? Is that yeah. where uh... now, Do your clients and colleagues and so on just accept this as a part of your life and they know that you're going to be running every day or do some people not know? I don't usually advertise it too much, you know, because, you know, some people may not appreciate that you take, like, an hour and a half off in the middle of the day. Do you normally run at lunchtime? Yeah, that's what I like, because it kind of breaks up the day. Yeah. And I find that when you get back the office after a run, you feel better. All the problems that seemed insoluble before your run seem very manageable when you get back. I don't know about you, but I genuinely believe there's no such thing as a bad run. There are difficult runs. get my best thoughts while running too. Sort of 
big picture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, how well have you encouraged? Has your run streak encouraged any others in your friends and so on? Uh, well, I have two sons, Mark and Jack, uh-huh. and uh, they run a little bit, not regularly like I do. Mark won the uh, San Francisco Cross Country Championship when he was in high school. That was a big deal. Yeah, that's, a, that's incredible. Now, is that because he's genetically predisposed to running? Or do you think, was he encouraged by his father's sort of relentless, never say die attitude to run? Maybe both, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's incredible. And he still runs. Yeah, a little bit. I think the world would be a better place if everybody ran. I think that's right. So what do you do, Joel? Well, I work in the video games industry. I represent the developers of video games. I'm their agent, so I do all their commercial deals, their publishing deals, um, and distribution deals for them. That's great. With it's an interesting line of business. I've done it for about nearly 20 years now, in one form or another. It's the Game Developer Conference here in San Francisco this week, which is why I'm here every year. Although normally the weather isn't this nice. Yeah, well, we had a lot of rain this year. And I got wet a few times. I did a run for the channel here in Las Vegas a couple of, well, about maybe a month ago. And uh, it was the wettest run I'd ever done with... Dewey from the Red Rock Running Company, the owner of the local running store, and to bless him, he, uh, he came out on a Sunday, I think it was, had it on Saturday, it was pouring rain, the, uh, the cover for the camera managed to get two drops of rain which covered our faces for the whole of the run, so I don't know what the video is like, I don't think anybody can watch it, but it was fun, it's not what you expect from Las Vegas, that's just so, do you know, no. During your 17 years, have you had anything that's given you pause to consider not running? Well, the closest, I think, came when I was playing softball and got hit on the foot by a line drive. And it was really, really hurting. I had trouble even walking back to my car, and uh, if I hadn't had a running streak going, I definitely would not have gone running the next day. Yeah. But I started, and I found that once I got started, it was just a matter of, you know, putting one foot in front of the other yeah. and keeping it going. It's ever. That's the trick. I think that's the trick to life, generally, Carl, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 90% of life is showing up. <laughs> yeah. Putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah. I've, uh, I ran in um, Palm Springs in September with a guy called Gary Russ, who's a lovely guy. He's in his 70s. He's had a 35-year running streak going. Wow. Yeah, he had both feet operated on, both knees, he had his prostate removed, still managed to get it running. If he can do that, I can do anything. How old is he? Now he's in his, he starts when he was 40, so he's in his 75, I think. He's got a 45 year old wife, so he must be doing something right. That's probably all down to the running. His son's got a same length running streak as me, and he's only 18. Been doing it since he was 10. I'll have to get in touch with him because we spent uh, a week, a year down in Palm Springs. I think it would be cool to run with him. Oh, he's a lovely, lovely guy. If you watch the video on my channel, you'll see he's an extremely engaging guy. I've run with him twice. Uh, I've run with him on my day 2000. I hope it's having a bunch of friends out with me running from Union Square in 
Mouths. And that's going to be a big deal, day 3,000. Yeah. Miles. Those big milestones are something to celebrate, I think. Day 5,000. Oh, yeah. Big day. Yeah, I, I bet. That is uh, that's incredible. I think it's fun. What point did you register with the um, International Running Street Association? told me about it, so uh, probably registered about five years ago. Oh, really? Wow, well, you've been doing it that long before you even got on the books. I didn't realise I was doing the running streak until, oh, until somebody else told me. Good. And then I looked it up and realised there are other crazy people like me. <laughs> so, where do you rank now on that? But I'm fourth in the UK, I think. In worldwide, I don't know, 200, 300, no, nowhere. Gary Rust in Palm Springs, he's 41st. What about you? I think, last time I checked, I think it was 108 or something. That's pretty incredible. The only 107 people in the world have been running longer than you. Yeah. Well, I think that's in the US, so. Right. Well, there, there aren't people outside of the US doing it. I've uh, I ran with a buddy of mine who started a little bit after me a couple of weeks ago, Elliot Webb, in the UK. So I have a cousin, Rob Marcus, shout out to you Rob, and his son is now, I don't know where he is exactly, but I think Adam is probably every day for maybe 10 years. Wow. So he's definitely among the street royalty. Yeah, really. Well, they don't even take you seriously until you've done, <laughs> what, a year. And then I think I'm called proficient because I've done over five years. Yeah, and it's like I've gone running every day for five years and all I am is proficient. proficient. Yeah, really. So we got a loop. Sure, it's a nice, uh, we get our only hill of Carl's Run. I don't mind hills, but it's hard to pump your arms when you're, when you're uh, holding a stupid selfie stick. Yeah. We ran in Barbados with uh, Alison Allen, who's an ultra runner. She'd run 21 miles when she met me for the three that we did together. We were, she was running up the hill like it wasn't even there. <laughs> I was busting a gut. I had to think of questions to which there were long answers to give myself a chance to not talk. Well, I have a friend named Jordan. Shout out to you, Jordan. And he's a hill. Oh, yeah. And so, we go running up the steps to telegraph him. And that's very difficult. And so the secret to running up those steps is you ask an open-ended <laughs> question yeah, at the bottom yeah. at the bottom <laughs> like who's going to be in the Giants starting rotation this year yeah. and then just shut up until you get to the top right yeah that's what do you much. think will win the Democratic nomination <laughs> next year <laughs> You must have wised up to that by now. <laughs> yeah. What a fabulous place to live. Yeah. Have you always lived in San Francisco? Are you a native? I am. I went to college in Sonoma County, so somewhere around here, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, I just saw the top poking out of there. Yeah. And where in the UK do you live? I live kind of southwest of London, in between London and the English Channel, uh -huh. and in the South Downs National Park, which is very hilly, a very beautiful part of the world, and uh, I'm very lucky. We, one of the reasons we chose the house we live in is because both my wife and I run so much, it's, uh, it's worth having some nice runs right on your doorstep. Did you meet her? 
you were running? No. Oddly, I was in uh, Los Angeles working. And uh, she's Canadian, although she was living in LA at the time. She's lived all over the world in warm places because she wanted to get away from Toronto, which is freezing cold. And now she's eternally annoyed at me for making a live in the UK. I'd live in California in a heartbeat if I could. I love it here. Yeah, a lot of people would and do, of course. Yes, indeed. So this will take us back in a big loop. I guess we're going east now. Right, we're running kind of behind the Conservatory of Flowers. Right. And we'll past a bocce ball court and a baseball down. So was um, sports always uh, important in your life? You obviously started running at 30, but you play softball. But uh, was athletic endeavour always something that you've been into? Well, I was never... <coughs> much of an athlete, except for running, but I've always been a fan of spectator sports. I love baseball. Yeah. Funnily enough, I love baseball as well. I learned how it worked when I lived in Canada, and it's, one, it's probably the best spectator sport I know. Yeah, it really is. And you presumably, I'm guessing, <laughs> How'd you guess? <laughs> Just intuition. <laughs> I've been to the stadium there, which is extremely impressive. It's lovely. I call it the shrine. <laughs> Do you have season tickets? Do you go to all the home games? I have season tickets. I don't go to all the games, but... The aforementioned Jordan, who... Uh, is a hill runner. He's one of my partners in season tickets. Oh, I see. Yeah. This is fabulous. I was a, bit, a little worried that it was going to be uh, foggy when we, I was driving over here from Mill Valley this morning. But now the fog's burned off. This is spectacular. This is about as good a running conditions as you can find, right? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, especially in the spring. This time of year, when I go running to the ballpark, it's like, I can't wait for the season to start. Sometimes, and, uh, I think you'll agree that this fits within the streak parameters. A run a mile and a half to the stadium, and I'll catch a couple innings of the game, and then I'll run back. Nice. So it's a three-mile run. Sure. It's interrupted a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. question about whether a certain run qualifies, I impanel what I call streak judges. <laughs> Do you? And, uh, you know, they will be the judge of yeah. whether a run counts. Interesting. Who are they? What do they do? What qualifies them for the task? Well... Most of them are runners, like my friend Jim Poindexter. He's been a street judge. Right. And uh, a lot of them are lawyers. So. And do you, do you ask for adjudication after the fact or before? Uh, usually after. And then are they really going to 
penalise you and say, no, nope, that's not a run, <laughs> knowing what was at stake. Well, I have to confess that there's a little bit of what we call in the legal profession forum shopping. <laughs> oh, sorry, wait, wait, wait. In my selection of street judges. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, that seems perfectly reasonable to me. But I think e each of these runs have legitimately met the criteria of the U.S. Running Streak Association. Well, I also think that people ask me, well, you know, you can cheat in the direction you want. Then I say, well, why would you bother? <laughs> like, who's, who's watching? Or oh, tense game of bowls there. Yeah, this is Bajji. We, we call it bowls in the UK. Crown Green Bowl. Our bowling isn't exactly the same as yours. Lawn bowling, okay. Um, so do you find when you um, when you feel ill or you get a bit of a cold or something? Are you like me that it doesn't really last long? Like That's feel, true. I feel a bit under the weather for a day. And after my run the next day, I normally feel pretty much fine. Like I'm, I just don't really get ill. I'm, just, I'm convinced it's because I run every day. I think that has a lot to do with it. I mean, recently I think I had a stretch of two or three days where I was a little under the weather, but it didn't really threaten running street. Now how old are you Carl if you don't mind me asking? 66. 66. How about you? I'm 48 now. I have to think about that for a second. Just turned 48. I started because I was turning 40 and I thought if I'm ever going to get into shape I've got to do it now. You must have been about a similar age when you started the streak. Yeah I, I think I was 49. Have you ever had any um, particularly taxing circumstances you've had to negotiate? And when I fly to the US or wherever, I fly quite a lot. I often have to get up super early and do my run before my car picks me up to take me to the airport, which well, is difficult. Funny that you should ask, because we were in Rome and I ran at 8 o'clock Rome time right. and our flight was going to leave at 1 but it got cancelled so they sent us to a hotel to sleep for a few hours we missed a connecting flight so I didn't get back to San Francisco until 9 p.m. Oh. San Francisco time the next day. And immediately had to go for a run. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that before. That's unpleasant, isn't it? So the, it may have been, you know, 36 or perhaps close to 48 hours after the previous run, but... It was the next day, local time. Right, well, that, well, that's all you can go by, right? I right. Mean, there's nothing else you can do. Right. I've actually planned all my work travel around my running, specifically for that reason. Yeah, and I had another time where I think I went running at 3 a.m. after arriving in Oslo. But it was the summer, so... Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Mid midnight sun, it's great. Yeah. Yes. So that's, you know, those are a little tough. Well, we're getting towards the end of our three miles here. Yeah. Carl, let's stop where we started and do a bit of a roundup. So do you put the whole 
half an hour run on YouTube? Or? Yeah, I don't edit it because I'm useless at editing and my producer is extremely good at it, but I'm sure he'll be frustrated with the lack of intro and outro and sound quality, but uh, this is all I'm capable of. How much longer are you going to be at Mass House? Until uh, next Friday. Five great. Hours. But I'm here every, every year, so maybe we'll do it again next year. That would be great. And, uh, I trust you're still going to be running by that time. You're not going to stop. I sure hope so. Let's uh, leave it here. Carl, thank you very much. All right, Joel. It was, it was a real, a real pleasure. pleasure, yeah. Thank you. It's always nice to meet fellow crazy street runners. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can do it again sometime. Yeah, that would be great. Subscribe if you can. Thanks a lot.